Good morning, guys. It is Monday. It is going to be another beautiful day. We've got the Buick. Today, we're going to try and give you an update on the 2012 Kia Soul as well as the shop truck. So, stay tuned. So, the 2012 Kia Soul. Yeah. So, I've shown you that we've got the uh, valve cover off. Um, we have figured out that the timing chain tensioner is bad as suspected and um, ultimately what we were able to do is with a cylinder leak down test was be able to prove, and I think it's these two, but we've got a couple of uh, valves that are either stuck open and or bent which basically means that because the engine was out of time and we tried to start it uh, it may have bent some valves so the head has to come off and we will determine how far we're going to go from there with this particular motor whether we uh, send it out for repair as far as the head goes or we bite the bullet and put another motor in it now one thing I guess that I should state is that we don't believe that this motor failed on its own what we believe happened was the tensioner was being forced to do something uh, it couldn't do. So I'm not sure if that all sounds right. I'm not sure how, uh, how it's coming across to you guys, but uh, again, the, the, the gist of it is the timing chain uh, tensioner had failed trying to get it started. Uh, and when the timing chain tensioner fails, it causes some serious issues like bent valves, jump timing. So. We can't pinpoint it, we can't point the finger at anybody. All we gotta do is get her fixed. So, <clears throat> that's your update on the 2012 Kia Soul. And as always, you got it. The Kia saga continues. And as far as the 2006 shop truck, the GMC Sierra 1500, there she is, naked. We did manage to get all the decals off. Uh, and get the residue all cleaned up and I'm not sure uh, in this sunlight you guys probably couldn't see it on camera anyway but there is no residue and no fading left behind so that was good and as we take a look at the other side again that is one naked truck but it should be going out tomorrow like I said we're waiting for some documentation to come in from uh, GM Canada and that documentation is just a letter that states that this vehicle complies to uh, the EPA and DOT standards in the U.S. Uh, so that it can be registered and licensed uh, in the U.S. So hopefully that letter comes in either late today or tomorrow and then we can get this truck uh, off to the customers. That's the update on the shop truck. And last but certainly not least, the 2011 Jeep Compass the uh, lady that had it uh, towed in to us with a bad transmission um, decided that it was time to trade so she came in on Saturday she bought the black 2014 Ford Escape and she is gone with that now we've got this Jeep Compass here with a bad transmission now granted we don't have a whole lot of money tied up into it uh, simply because of the transmission and she was aware of that that she knows that it's going to cost us some money to get it repaired and because it doesn't run we haven't been able to we haven't been able to get it in the shop to check out the rest of the vehicle to see what repairs it may need whether it be brakes uh, suspension parts ball joints or so we're gonna check all that out uh, once we get the uh, transmission here getting the transmission is not an issue we can find one of those fairly quickly but at the end of the day it's a matter of getting it in the shop and getting time uh, to swap that out so that's the update on that. One last little update that I'm going to give you here on this video is uh, you guys all know that we camp. Uh, we have a seasonal lot down at Island View Campground and friends of ours uh, have bought a new trailer and their old one uh, had to be cleaned out and pulled out after sitting for 20 years. So. This weekend was that project and as you see behind me a 1993 travel trailer or a fifth wheel that uh, we basically had to dig out of the mud and uh, hope to God that the wheels would turn 
and that the landing gear would crank. Uh, that was our biggest fear, uh, that the landing gear wouldn't crank and that the, that the brakes or the wheel bearings might be seized up on it. But we did manage to get it out, pulled it out with not a problem with the brakes, not a problem with the landing gear, and when we were towing it, the only issue was the uh, right hand turn signal and brake light did not work. All the other lights work, and uh, on this particular rig, it has, uh, it's fully loaded, it's got the air conditioner on the top, it's got a fridge, a stove, um, hot water tank, and everything works. So, uh, for something that's, you know, 25 years old, uh, it may not look like much, but apparently it's pretty solid. Um, I mean, it needs a little bit of repair uh, up along the roof line there and the, a little bit on the back, but I mean, it's been sitting for a while. Other than that, she's in pretty good shape and uh, it's got to be worth, you know, a couple grand to somebody who's looking for maybe a camp trailer or something to stick on their beach lot. So that is why we have a 25 year old fifth wheel sitting on our lot. We're going to stick it out here and hopefully get some exposure. Uh, maybe we can help sell it. So I wanted to give you guys an update on the downshift cable. The reason why I wanted to give you an update is because last I left you, I had it hooked up underneath the car and I didn't have what I needed at the time to make the connection up front work. As you can see, we took the existing bracket that was here and all we did was we heated it up and got a hold of it with a big pair of channel locks and twisted it around so that uh, we opened up the hole that was there a little bit to run this cable here through. And then we were able to make our adjustment here because this is adjustable. This is adjustable here just by spinning this little nut and it will move the cable in and out. We've got it adjusted down below as much as we can. and. We took it for a couple of test drives and, and, and what we found was it wasn't downshifting and we couldn't figure out why. We had all the adjustments just right on the edge of where they're supposed to be as far as uh, working. But I'm gonna show you exactly what the problem was. So I'm gonna try and get as much light in here as possible so you can see what's going on. So. That shiny thing down there is the return spring on the lever, which is on the transmission. The cable itself, which runs here, and I'll give it a little jiggle so you can see it. This is an eBay special, this cable, this kick down cable. And when you open up the throttle, it should pull the cable, therefore pulling the detent on the transmission. And the reason why it wasn't downshifting was this. I'll see if you can catch it on camera. The whole cable itself, when I step on the throttle, is shifting. And even better, I'll try and catch it here if you can, it'll focus, is the cable is shrinking together. And Basically what that means when the cable is shrinking is that it's losing the pulling ability on the detent on the transmission so it won't downshift. Um, yes, it was a cheap eBay cable. However, you would think that they would build it so that it would take some tension, which it was designed for, but probably made in China and not made to withstand what it needs to hear. So at the end of the day, looks like we got a visitor. At the end of the day, the cable's no good. 
Uh, it's not doing what it was intended to do. So I've either got to spend a few more dollars and get a good quality cable or go back to the rod, the kick down rod that was on there and start adjusting that um, a little bit better. But the theory of a cable is supposed to be that the um, that it works better and uh, I think I'm set on that cable working better. I just got to find one that works. So there's your update on the kick down cable. Come here kitty. You can come visit but you can't stay in my garage. I don't want you peeing all over the place. <laughs> Turkey. You're a good cat though. And last but not least I do want to give a shout out to my biggest little fan. Parker, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Well guys, that is it for this video. We've given you some updates on quite a number of projects on the go here right now. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching what you have to see. I did not sing to you this time around. Uh, I know how all of you like my country music singing, but sorry, not this video. So having said all that, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you are tuning in for the first time and you don't know much about my channel and my videos, there's a uh, subscribe button right below this uh, video. Please click on that and click that bell notification because when you do, you get notified every time I upload a new video. Guys, thanks once again for tuning in. I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next upload.